Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Hayden Newberry Fishing. I'm Hayden Newberry. I'm a travel nurse. I travel around the country bass fishing pretty much everywhere I go. Also, uh, this past year I fished the Bassmaster Opens. I fish a lot of different tournaments and stuff everywhere I go. But tonight we're in the back of the camper. I'm making a video about a near miss from this season. So I feel like just if something's going to go wrong, it goes wrong on tournament day. If people are going to be ugly to each other or get in fights or or just be a problem, it's always, you know, it, it comes to a peak on tournament day. I've already made a video not too long ago about just using common courtesy in tournaments, but this one is going to be more so just thinking and using your brain about what you do when you're driving a boat on a crowded lake on tournament day when it seems like it happens sometimes where people just don't think. They, they're they thinking too much about other things going on because there's 900 other things going on in our heads and you forget just the simple thought process, I guess, that goes into not dying or not killing somebody else. But I'm gonna start out in this, I'm gonna talk about what the scenario is, kind of what went down and everything, and then just stay tuned for after that part because I feel like this is kind of a good video for just a, a teaching experience on what to do and what not to do and just some simple things that can keep you from doing something stupid or hurting yourself, hurting somebody else, somebody dying during a tournament, which would be the worst thing ever if you went out on tournament day and hit somebody or, or somebody else hit you, just go out there and make everything safe. Everybody just be smart about what you're doing and what you're doing with your boat because these things are fast, they're powerful, and they will hurt you if you treat them wrong. So let's get to the video. After that, I'll kind of explain what he could have done, I guess, to avoid it, what I think he should have done. Um, but the scenario, I guess, here is we're on a river system, launching a lot of boats in a tournament, and guy passes me. We'll get to where he should have passed me and other things after it. Guy passes me, then cuts me off, and because of the way that it happened, I almost T-boned him going really fast. We were both moving 60 to 70 miles an hour here, but we'll explain everything going into it after this, but here's the video. I'll explain the situation to you, and then we'll go over how you can avoid it. All right, guys. So what I want you to pay attention to in this video here is that I guess that there, the time that it's going to seem like in this video, obviously in person is a lot shorter, but I just kind of want you guys to see how this scenario went down and just, I guess, pay attention to also how bad it could be. And I'm going to point out some things that obviously could have been done differently here, but here we go. I'm going to show you guys. Hold on down. Let me turn it down so you can hear me. All right, so he's passing me. I'm gonna pause it right here. Right here is is where he passed me. We're at three minutes, and well, I'll we'll go to the one you guys can see. 13 minutes and 57 seconds down there in the left bottom corner of the screen. So that's right where he gets past me. Now we're gonna go up. He's pulling ahead. Again, remember in the GoPro that distance <laughs> is a little deceiving. I'm going to pause it right here. So now he's been past me for 20 seconds. Not, <laughs> not a, a huge amount of time, but something I want to point out here while we got this paused. Look at, I guess, the room on each side. I mean, he passed... 10 feet away from me which that that to me isn't as big of a deal like if you were there in person there isn't a whole lot of room on the red river period because a lot of this stuff on each side is um flat shallow has jetties coming out of it so 
not necessarily upset that he passed me close by, but we're 20 seconds after he has passed me on that side. And then right here, had I been looking anywhere else at my graph, which you know that if you're running out in a tournament and stuff like that going that fast, that sometimes you'll glance down at your graph, make sure you're not about to hit like a stump you've marked or something somewhere. Anything. Any anything because right where this happens now watch you can tell right there that he started to slow down just a little bit we are now 27 seconds ish right after he broke past me so at 27 and right there that's three seconds four seconds sorry four seconds and had I not seen him right as it was happening I would have killed him that's how quick grand total from the time it took me from when he he dumped it to the time it took me to literally get to him was five seconds 33 six seconds five six seconds whatever either way if you're that close in a boat going 65 70 miles an hour you're not going to have a chance to stop there's no brakes but that's what i'm talking about that you have to be so careful and just think when you're doing stuff like this it's it's a big deal these tournaments and everything but little things like that I can tell you, me and my co-angler just looked at each other shaking our heads because it was very much <laughs> more, it's kind of what I want you guys to remember is that it's it's easy to look back at it in slow motion like this and just make, and it make it feel like it wasn't so much of a close call, but I can tell you in person, it didn't feel slow at all. It felt like, had I been doing anything but not paying attention to where I was going I would have killed that guy and probably hurt me and my co-angler really bad had it had it not sent us flying off into the woods somewhere so yeah that guy I guess and his co-angler because if you get hit broadside with a boat going that fast it's not gonna fare too well for you but you just gotta think when you're out there running these tournaments like that it it can be so dangerous but we'll get out of this video here I'll give you one last little clip through here so you can see it in full time but there you go dumps it luckily i had just enough time to shoot over okay so just from that you probably get really the gist of how that situation could have been avoided but to kind of dig into it what i was explaining in that video he knowing because you know that he knew up ahead he was going into that backwater on the right he had to have known <laughs> that 30 seconds before there that's where he was going is there a possibility that maybe he didn't realize he was so close yes totally could have happened either way it doesn't excuse what happened so ideally if you are <laughs> going into about we're going to start really simple on this ideally if you're going into a backwater on the right straight up ahead and there's literally one boat in front of you and you're not far away from takeoff the odds are that that boat you have to be incredibly unlucky if that boat was actually going to the exact same backwater as you and gonna take your spot would be pretty rare anyway even in desperation don't try to possibly kill somebody just to get to that spot but he could have passed me on the right and avoided that entire situation he would have gotten there in the exact same amount of time and I wouldn't have almost killed him. Second, if he did pass on the left, and then he realized real quick that it's not the end of the world. Just one really good idea, something I do a lot, is wave an arm. Something. So, so really slowly slow down and keep an eye behind you to look and see what's coming, coming up behind you. But could have just cut off to the left and got out of everybody's way and then watched, buzzed over there. Would have worked really well too. But something I do if I'm about to make a turn, especially with that many people going out, it's not, if you feel weird about it, you shouldn't, but 
use your arm signals. Like they train you to to drive a bike on the road or something. Any kind of signal. But wave it up high as you can because it really possibly could be somebody running up on you and killing you behind you. Wave an arm. Get their attention. Point. I do that all the time. If I'm go running and I see anybody around me, I will literally point where I'm going. So there's no question in anybody's mind that that's where I'm going. Be prepared for me to head that direction. Because it can happen when you're going 70, 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, even 60 miles an hour. You might be looking this way and not see the guy that's about to turn and he waves his arm and then you go, oh, okay. And so you go ahead and swing it wide a different direction, something. But just really simple stuff like that. The main thing out of everything is just keep a level head, especially in those big tournaments like that when you're heading your first spot and make it known to everybody around you when you're about to make a turn somewhere or, or just cut somebody off. But I mean, don't cut somebody off, but I mean, I guess go going in front of somebody is what I'm trying to say. But just, there's a lot of really simple things that can avoid a lot of accidents. Always wear your life jacket, hands down. That will keep you, if, if in the event you're in some kind of boat wreck and you get knocked out, that'll be what saves you. So wear your life jacket. Think will save your life 99% of the time, but then just make it known to everybody. Use some hand signals and everybody will go home safe. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and stay tuned for the next one.